I remember when I organized my first conference in 2016. Oh yes, I had plans, I had a vision. I could see a full hall with, you know, people singing, dancing, rejoicing, and, you know, just shouting amen and hallelujah. You know, I was really excited. So I prepared everything and then I started advertising. But the registrations were slow, like painfully slow. And I started wondering, but where are all my Facebook fans? You know, all these people who keep giving me thumbs up and likes. And where are my friends, actually, my real life friends? What's going on? So I I couldn't really understand. So two weeks to the event, I've had about 15 registrations. And I, I must confess that I didn't really consider those real registrations because they were all more or less people who knew me. So to me, they were just coming because, oh, we want to support Laura, you know, we want to yeah, support her, help her so that the hall does not remain empty. So to me, those were not real, um, those were not real registrations. So I remember one day just sitting and, 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 and meditating and wondering, what do I need to do to get a full hall? There I was with a hall that could accommodate 100 people. And I still remember the day I was signing the contract. I actually asked them, what if we need more seats? You know, do you have extra seats available? And they said, oh, don't worry. We can sit up to 120 people in here. And I was like, yeah. So there I was sitting and wondering, okay, so 15 people. Hmm. What do I need to do um, to, to get more people? How do I, what strategy do I need to use now? And then I heard the Holy Spirit asking me, um, Laura, don't you think it's time you start preparing a program for the day, like a content? And I was like, who? A program for the day for 15 people? Like seriously? And then the Holy Spirit asked me, oh, really? So those 15 people are not worth your time? So you don't need to prepare a good program? A good content because there are just 15 people, only 15 people. And, you know, I thought about it and it was, aha, uh-huh. yeah, really, come to think of it, I should give them my best, right? Because these are 15 people who really, really believe in me. They have sacrificed their time for me. So I should be giving them their best. So one of the lessons I learned from that was not everyone will love or support you. Not everyone will love or support you. You know, after years of moderation, organizing events, writing, coaching, etc., I finally came to the understanding that no matter what I do, no matter how I do it, Some people will love me and love what I do. Some people will not love me, will not love what I do, will not support me. And there is just nothing I can do about it. The freedom that came when I accepted this fact and just let it be. The truth is that some of the people that you rely on, that you think will be there, will let you down. Sincerely, there were people I knew were going to be the first people to register, be the first people to call and, you know, ask me how I was doing with the preparation, but I saw nobody. However, God will always send the right people at the right time. And that is what he has been doing over the years. So, my dear brother, my dear sister, you might find yourself in a situation like mine. Maybe you've just organized your first event or maybe it's not your first event, but you are surprised that you don't have the the outcome that you were expecting. Some of the people that you thought would be the first people to be there are not there. 
But I want to tell you something. Do not bother about numbers. Do not bother about who is there and who is not there. Be faithful to those who believe in you right now and give them the best. Remember what the king said to the faithful servants we saw a few days ago. He said to them, the two who made profit, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will now put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Matthew 23, 25 verse 23. Yes, be faithful in the little things. Be faithful with what you have right now. And also remember, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the, in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. That is from Luke 15 verse 10. No, I'm not saying that those whom you have now are repentant sinners. I'm just saying that even if only one person registers for your next event or for my next event, I will give my best because that person is so worth it. And that is how precious we are in the sight of God. So, my dear sister, my dear brother, stay on your lane and keep doing what you do. What you've been called to do. You are right on track. Remain faithful in the small things. And the Lord will enlarge your course in ways that you can't even imagine. Amen? Amen. Points to ponder. Can you relate to the above mentioned scenario? Have you ever felt abandoned by those you expected to be there? What advice would you give to someone who is feeling discouraged? What is your main takeaway from today's meditation? Do you have any testimonies, questions, or inspiration to share? Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of a new day. This is a day that you've made that I may rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I continue to thank you for the Easter joy which restores my peace, my hope, and my faith. Father, I thank you for reminding me today to be faithful in the little things. Many times, Lord, I get carried away by the big things. I want to wait until the cup is full before I start, before I say thank you. However, you remind me today about the importance and value of every single soul. Grant me that grace to always focus on my lane and to do my best with whatever you have given me right now. Help me, Father, to remember that even if people let me down, you will always be there to lift me up. Father, during this time of crisis, we continue to stand upon your promises to protect, to heal, and to restore us. Father, we pray and thank you that you will lead your children out of this global dilemma that we find ourselves in today. We pray and thank you that even in this time, we will focus our eyes on heavenly things and deepen our relationship with you. May your grace bind any plans of the enemy and his agents to destroy your creation. May you grant spiritual wisdom to the leaders of the nations as they make decisions. Father, we continue to pray for peace in our broken world. Heal the sick, comfort the afflicted, provide for the needy. May they find comfort and healing in you. You are the great I am, Lord. There is nothing you cannot do. Father, we thank you that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. May we experience your peace and your harmony and your justice in our world once more. Through Christ our Lord, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. I'm Laura Tinzo, and you've been listening to Practical Theology. If this has been a blessing to you, please go ahead and share and be a blessing to another person. If God gives us life, we'll be back with another edition very soon. Keep on praying for the world. Keep on praying and God will come through for all of us in amazing ways. God bless you. Bye-bye.